So this presentation is a right-sided Maytherner, an interesting um, clinical anatomical variant um, presented by myself, Dr. David Franco, and Dr. Manuchair Manucheri from Florida Hospital Orlando Internal Medicine Residency. And basically, the case that I'm presenting here is a case of right-sided Maytherner. So just as background, uh, Maytherner syndrome is um, basically compression of the left, as you can see here, left common um, iliac vein that is from the right common iliac artery. But in this case, we had exactly the opposite. Um, what we had was the right common iliac artery was compressing against the right common iliac vein and therefore producing um, deep venous thrombosis of that extremity in this patient. I could not find any um, prevalence or incidence of a right sided Maytherner syndrome because of its rarity, but there have been case reports in the past. So basically, a 16-year-old male patient presented with a two-day history of uh, slowly progressive severe right lower extremity pain, swelling, and erythema. The patient had been on a canoe trip for five days and had flown in um, 12 days prior to presentation. And because of the two-day history of the pain, he consulted a walk-in clinic. At the walk-in clinic, the patient had a Doppler venous ultrasound that was performed. He was diagnosed with a deep venous thrombosis of the right lower extremity and was therefore referred to our facility. When he consulted to the ER, we evaluated the patient, confirmed the finding with a Doppler venous ultrasound, and because of the extensive nature of his deep venous thrombosis, we consulted interventional radiology. They performed a venogram, and in this venogram, they demonstrated deep venous thrombosis from the popliteal vein, both superficial and deep femoral veins, extending cephalad into the inferior portion of the inferior vena cava. The patient had thrombolysis, which was mechanical, and pharmacological after temporary IBC filter placement, which went uneventful. Because flow was patent, patient had temporary IBC removed and was discharged on warfarin and um, low molecular weight heparin as a bridge. But unfortunately, three days later, he presented once again for the recurrent episode of the right lower extremity DVT. At that time, venogram was um, performed. There was recurrence of the DVT extending once again from the femoral vessels, cephalad, and the venogram demonstrated what not, had not been um, detected earlier, which was compression, as previously mentioned, of the right common iliac artery over the right common iliac vein, therefore producing a uh, diagnosis of a right-sided Maytherner syndrome. So in this case, the patient had been tested for a hypercoagulable workup and a heterozygosity of factor V lidin was positive and antiheparin antibodies were positive as well. So patient at this time was not giving heparin, but bivalirudin. After bivalirudin administration and heparin bridge um, and warfarin bridge, patient was discharged home. Patient was non-compliant with warfarin and reconsulted um, after the stent placement. Um, and therefore, patient had to have reintervention of this expandable stent in the right common um, iliac vein, which was successful. Thrombolytic and mechanical thrombolysis was performed and patient was discharged on lifelong warfarin. 